Finding Time for Change. This simple table can be used to target certain areas that will give you time for a change. Begin by listing the key job tasks. Estimate the hours per week you spend on each of those tasks. Then estimate the percent of each task that is value added. Do the math and find out how many hours of weekly waste you live with. We have much more time for pursuing process excellence at our disposal than we realize. Because few of us actually measure how we spend our time, we can easily be lulled into thinking that because we're busy, we must be effective as well. This is usually not the case, but to heighten our awareness of the magnitude of this problem, we need to begin by taking a much closer look at how we use our limited time resource each week. The analysis you do in this area does not have to be stopwatch driven. Rough estimates are usually enough to shock you. Begin by completing a table similar to the one shown above. Simply estimate how many hours a week you spend in meetings, processing email and texts, filling out paperwork or process documentation, if you will, working with others to resolve personnel issues, and developing projects. Those are the general time buckets for a manager or supervisor. Once you've estimated your weekly time use in each of these areas, try to define the percentage of each investment that is truly value added. Think like a customer. What percentage would really matter to your customers? In other words, if you stop spending as much time in this area as you currently are, which internal or external customers might notice the difference? These value-added time percentages can then be used to project the weekly wasted time amounts that exist. If your current waste levels are high, don't feel too bad. You have just identified some prime areas where time exists to fuel your pursuit of process excellence. Most people can find at least four to eight hours per week of time that is currently being wasted, at least from the customer's perspective. If this small amount of time is freed up and reinvested effectively in process improvement activities, you can eventually work yourself out of the reactive, firefighting world and into the world of proactive process improvement. I've done it myself, I've helped others do it, so I know it's possible. Examples of Meeting Waste Here's some quick ways to waste meeting time. Repeat information for latecomers. Fail to reach consensus. Read to people. Don't use an agenda. Base decisions on opinion only. Discount the contributions of others. Don't do regular process checks. Here's some meeting defects. Going off on tangents. Ground rule violations. Exceeding time allotments. Dominating conversations. Limited contribution. Starting and or ending late. Failing to achieve meeting objectives. And discounting contributions. I informally survey hundreds of people a month as to where they feel they waste the most time at work. Meetings consistently head the list of responses, even though email and text processing are currently running a close second. In most cases, even though these people state that they are spending as much as 50% or more of their time in meetings each week, rarely do they measure the effective use of this time. Culturally, we've come to believe that going to meetings is what managers and supervisors do. Meetings serve as evidence that we are doing our job. I don't buy this argument, but it does represent a rationalization for time waste that many people use. I'm not saying that all meetings are a waste of time. I feel and know that meetings are a key tool in the Process Excellence Toolkit. I've also spent enough time in meetings and observed meeting behavior enough to know that we waste a lot of the time we invest in getting together with one or more people to talk about something. I consistently see people waste time by going off on tangents, failing to manage behaviors that hurt group dynamics, and reading to others. I see people come to meetings unprepared and then sit there for an hour not saying anything. Is that hour spent in a value-added manner? Worst of all, I know that we don't teach people about group dynamics like we used to. Years ago, you had to not only know about concepts like groupthink and the process content model, but you also had to know how to address group process problems. Many of today's meeting leaders and members have never heard of group dynamics concepts, even though meeting process problems are resulting in a lot of wasted time. 
What types of team member behaviors and agenda misuse are wasting your limited work time? Because meetings are a process, they inherently contain waste. To identify your meeting waste, begin by identifying your most common types of meeting defects. The easiest way to find these defects is to look for ground rule violations. In order to identify meeting ground rule violations, you have to define ground rules for the team. Does anyone remember when we used to have those? Tracking meeting performance. If you want to reduce meeting waste, you have to trend meeting performance over time. A performance summary spreadsheet, similar to the one shown above, can be used for this purpose, just as it can for any process. If you prefer to use a database software package such as Access, feel free to. The database software works just as well for capturing the data. Creating the trend lines, however, may take a little more work. In this example, each row of the spreadsheet is used to capture the details specific to a given meeting. Each row is a meeting. Add base data types to your own spreadsheet if you wish, but at a minimum, try to capture the number of people in the meeting, the planned and actual length of the meeting in minutes, the overall meeting effectiveness score, and the number of meeting defects that occurred. Additional columns can be used to track specific high-volume defect counts and to monitor performance by meeting type, such as conference call versus face-to-face. -face. Meeting costs can also be estimated using a weighted average labor cost per hour rate, the actual meeting length, and the number of people in attendance. You can obtain the meeting ineffectiveness cost by multiplying 1 minus the meeting effectiveness score times the cost. So in other words, the less effective your meeting is, the more the waste cost. So we look at the total meeting cost, what percent was value added, what percent was non-value added. It has been my experience that by simply tracking this information and reviewing the trends at the start of each successive meeting, most people will change their in-meeting behavior enough to significantly affect the results. And this will happen within a few weeks of following this process. Providing the team with feedback relative to defect frequency, meeting cost, and meeting score is usually enough to motivate people to make changes on their own. You can, of course, get even better results if you work as a group in an open dialogue manner to talk about why these results are being produced. What can we do as a group to better manage these results? Eventually, your team might even develop the ability to address meeting defects as they happen. I've worked in groups with that ability with that capability and it makes meetings actually a pleasure to go to. Mm -hmm.